Good morning, everyone. I want to start with a set of verses, three verses, as I begin what I want to speak on this morning. The first is in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, Luke 1, 37. It says there that nothing shall be impossible with God. Luke one thirty seven. nothing will be impossible with God. And then let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 27, it says there, And Jesus, looking at the disciples, said to them, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Luke one twenty seven says, 37 says, Nothing shall be impossible with God. And Jesus here is affirming, affirming the same statement, that with God all things are possible. I really want you to cement that in your heart. God is able to do all things. I mean, I th if someone asks you, do you know that or do you believe that, I think the, flip and the quick answer would be yes, I know that. Um, the experience and reality of that is what I want to draw out this morning. God is able to do all things. And then the last verse I want to uh, point, uh, speak, uh, point to is in Mark, just a few chapters behind, a few pages behind. That's Mark chapter 9. And verse 23. Mark 9, verse 23. Jesus, again speaking here, says, If you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. So those three verses I want to use as my, the verses of my, of my message this morning. God is able to do everything. Nothing shall be impossible with God. But Jesus, in this last verse, Mark 9, 23, says, those things that are possible with God are, all, are possible, those things which God is able to do, all the possibilities of God are applied to that one who believes. All things are possible to those who believe. Um, I want to talk on faith this morning. Faith. The first verse I read there in uh, Luke 1, 37, you know that story when the angel came to Mary and announced to her that Zechariah and Elizabeth were having a child. The angel reaffirms to her that though Elizabeth had been old in age, and at that point it, was, it appeared impossible that this woman could have a child, yet God had answered their prayer and she had conceived. That which appeared impossible, God has done. I would encourage you to read that story, Luke chapter one, the story of when, of Zechariah and, and, and Elizabeth, even when the angel came to Zechariah also. Both had been old in age, but in Luke one there, it says of Zechariah and Elizabeth that they were righteous and walking in all the commandments of God. Luke 1, verse 6. There's a point I want to make first here. That both of them were righteous before God, and walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, they were blameless, yet they had no child. The point I just want to make quickly before I go on is this, that the fact that one is walking faithfully with God and living right before the Lord does not preclude them from difficulties in life. And so the fact that uh, just because these people had no children at the time, it was easy to maybe say God had cursed them or something. But surely that was not the case yet. Even though they were blameless before God, God's plan was for John the Baptist to be conceived and born at a specific time. I'm sure you know prophecies had gone hundreds of years before 
that John was going to be born and it would be the precursor to the Lord Jesus Christ. The point I'm trying to make is this. Had John been born 20 or 40 years before, he could not have been the one to come before the Lord Jesus Christ. God had a time. And even though it appeared that the time was being delayed or things were not happening in the lives of these two people, God still had a plan. Let me show you one of the verses that, that prophesies of John being that one to come before. If you turn with me to Isaiah 46. Sorry, Isaiah chapter 40. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, it says there of John the Baptist that he would be the voice that cries in the wilderness that prepares the way of the Lord crying to make straight in the desert the highway of our God. God had long ago prepared, had a plan that John the Baptist would be the one to come before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, even though it appeared nothing had happened in the lives of this husband and wife, God's timing was still in place. The schedule would not shift. And of course, the, other, uh, the, the next one in Mark 10 was when the, the rich young man had come and Jesus had said it would be difficult. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for one who trusts in his riches to enter God's kingdom. The disciples were amazed and said, who can be saved? And Jesus replies, with man it's impossible, but with God nothing shall be impossible. I'm trying to point out, hopefully as I speak this morning, that the fact that God can do all things, and we know he can, but the reality of the execution of what God has for each one of us can only be unlocked by faith, according to that Mark 9, 23. All things are possible to that man or that woman, that child of God who believes, who believes that indeed God is able to do all things for me. It's no good, brothers and sisters, that we believe or that we acknowledge the fact that God can do all things, yet for us not to trust in him, not to trust that he's able to do those things in our lives. Faith is the key that unlocks the hands of God is what I want to speak on today. Trusting that God, what God has said for me, he's able to do. He will do and he's able to do. Faith is the key that unlocks the hands of God. Uh, last week here, I was saying from Hebrews 10, 38, that we as believers must walk by faith. It's very essential. I hope you, you, you catch the gravity of this matter of faith. A believer who does not rest in, in assurance that what God has said he will do such a believer will not get much from God. In fact, in James chapter 1, James says here that that one who comes to God without faith is like an unstable person, tossed to and fro. He says there that let that one not expect to get anything from God. Faith is that which unlocks the hands of God. And the fact that God can do all things, but we indeed may not be experiencing that. Why? Somewhere in our hearts where faith, unbelief has crept in. I want to pray this morning that today we can, we can settle in our hearts and push unbelief aside. And just simply believe that what God has for me, what God has said in his word concerning me, he will bring to pass. It makes a difference, my brothers and sisters, in the lives even of believers, even of some, of all of us sitting in here. Some of us have entered that place. We're just saying that God, what he has said for me, he'll bring to pass. Maybe others of us have just, there's a shifting or in and out. God does not want that. My prayer for us this morning that we might be settled. Settled in confidence. God is able to do what he has for me. It makes a difference, a huge difference. Uh, James 1, 6 here. It says that if we come to God, he that comes to God must come in faith, not wavering. For the one who wavers, wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. 
Verse 7 says, let not that person think that he will receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. I'm trying to help us, by God's grace here, to simply go in deeper into God and settle it in our hearts. God is able to do all things, that's for sure. But as for me, as it applies to me specifically, I believe I believe the promises of God and even his commandments in his word, he's able to strengthen me to do. I believe, I believe. It's no good again to just say God is, can do all things. Sure, he can. But the question I must ask myself, am I experiencing those things which appear impossible? Am I experiencing them in my life? Faith is what brings that to pass. Faith, faith in God faith in his word that all that he has said for me will surely will surely come to be uh, the bible speaks of at least two kinds of people who are unab unable to please god at least two kinds of people one is in romans 8 8 where paul there says a believer who lives in the flesh it doesn't matter what that man or woman does they cannot please God. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. The one that is in the flesh cannot please God. I don't intend to speak on that this morning. But the other person that the Bible says who is unable to please God is in Hebrews 11, verse 6. This verse touches my heart a lot. Uh, those two verses, actually. But in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because the one that comes to God must believe that he is, and God is a rewarder of that one, the man who diligently, diligently seeks after him. Without faith, it is impossible. That's a very strong word. No matter what you do, you're not going to please God because God sees that fundamental trust is not there. And I try to apply this. Maybe we as fathers, as parents, can think of it this way. I've thought of it like this. If my children or any of my children should truly express a lack of confidence in me, how would that make me feel? I've just thought of it that way. It would have sat in my heart. It would break my heart tremendously if my child could tell me that I don't have confidence in my dad, that my dad would take care of me or that he cares for me. Imagine how much more it breaks God's heart that we, as his children, sometimes, many times, allow fear to take over our hearts and cannot really, I mean, we won't say with our mouths, but with our actions. That's pretty much what we express many times before God. God is not able to take care of me in this situation, or even in the future, God is not able to do that. Imagine how much it breaks God's heart. I've tasted, I've seen a bit of that by just putting myself in as a father to my children. It's not a good place to be. And so it says again in Hebrews eleven six, without a basic confidence in God, that God my Father cares for me and will help me and strengthen me and lead me to that life which he has called me to, the life which is found in the Lord Jesus Christ, everything which is of Christ that the Father has for me that he'll do. Without the confidence that he'll bring that to pass, the Bible says you cannot please God. Doesn't matter how much you come to church, how much you sing or minister and all of these things. God is looking for faith. In fact, Jesus once says, when the Son of Man comes, Luke 18, will he find faith in the earth? When Jesus Christ comes, when the Holy Spirit walks in, this, in the aisles of this church today, as is looking in the hearts of each one of us today, will he find faith, the confidence that God, my Father, will bring all things to be. I really believe this, that we've not truly understand the majesty and the power of God. Honestly, I'm speaking to myself also, because if I did, if we did, truly many of this unsettlement that we have in our hearts, the back and forth that we have today where sure that God will do it tomorrow when the dumps, tomorrow, next day, God, yeah, I mean, it will not be if we begin to see how much God cares for us. First, how much all, 
how much God is able to do. He can do all things. And not just that, that he cares for me. He cares for me. That will take away fear. It will. And build faith. Faith in God. It's critical, my brothers and sisters. That was exactly the problem the Jews had in the days of Moses. No matter how much God had spoken to them, still over and over and over again, unbelief took hold of their hearts. God was not able to fulfill what he wanted as he wanted with his people. And I'm afraid that even with us as believers today, many times the things God wants to accomplish, his hands are tied. Why? There's unbelief there somewhere. This man does not think that it is possible that I can do it. It must not be brothers and sisters. We have to push faith, uh, unbelief aside. Look to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, what you have said to me in this word, in the scriptures, Jesus, impossible though these things appear, you are able to do. And I'm not just speaking of spiritual matters, that is most critical, but even of the temporal things of life and the care that the Father has for me, my children, my job, my school, my future. Do you know God really cares about these things? And it may appear that not much is happening, not much is going on, but I want to assure you in the name of Jesus Christ, God cares, and the plan he has for you in due season, if you're walking by faith, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll come to be. Think of this Elizabeth and and Zechariah again. They did not know. They did not know that they were the ones to bring forth John the Baptist, who would be the one who prepared the way for Christ. But God from all time knew. Think of that. Apply that to your own lives. God has set a course for you and me. If I am in Jesus Christ, I mean, this is an, uh, an assurance that I, I meditate on many times. Nothing can shake the path the plan God has for me if I am walking in Jesus. Think of that for yourself. Don't go by what, what is happening or what you're seeing or what you want. And No, leave that aside. Just say in your heart, Father, what you have called for me, I don't know what they are. Just like Elizabeth and, Je and uh, Zechariah, they did not know. They just kept praying year after year. Father, God, give us a child. Give us a child give us a child, they did not know. And in fact, unbelief had crept so much into the heart of Zechariah, even while he prayed, that when the angel came, he still did not believe. Even though the angel came, you see that in Luke 1, the angel says, God has heard your prayer. So it tells me all the while he was praying for a child, he was praying in unbelief. Luke 1, the angel says, the Lord has heard your prayer. Luke chapter 1, in verse uh, 13, the angel says to Zacharias, Do not be afraid. The Lord has heard your prayer. Elizabeth will have a child. But later on in that chapter, Zacharias begins to ask, How can this, when, how can this be? And the angel tells him, Yeah, because of your unbelief, you're going to be dumb until this thing has happened. So it is, I see there that it's possible to cry and cry to God while there might still be unbelief in our hearts. My prayer for us is that it would not be so. Let us come in full assurance. We may have de uh, desires of God, but let us come in full assurance that even though things may not happen as we want them to, God is still in control of all things. And what he has said for me will come to be. I'm speaking to myself, my brothers and sisters, even now. I've seen that God is very faithful. He's very faithful in due time. In due time. What he has said for me will come to be. What he has said for you will come to be. But the very primary ingredient to see that thing come to be is faith. Do you believe 
that God cares for me and will bring to pass that which he has for me. Very, very important. Without faith, James says, you're not going to get anything that truly matters from the hand of God. You're unstable. Today, God, yeah, I believe, tomorrow. And the terrible thing about this matter is we don't say it. Just like Zechariah. He was praying all that time, but unbelief was in his heart. So much so that when God was ready to do it, he was, still, he was yet questioning. I wonder if this might be the case in, in our hearts. We must have the Holy Spirit show us, shine the light in this area of unbelief in our hearts and ask for God's hand to cast it away. God loves me and he'll take care of me. He cares for me. Uh, the Bible says in 2 uh, Corinthians 2, 11, that we must not be ignorant of the ways of the devil, his devices. I want to say to you and me, that we also must learn the ways of God, how God operates. If you can understand how God operates, it'll help you to see there's a method to what he's doing. There's a method to everything God is doing. I, uh, we must not be ignorant of Satan and his schemes. But I think even more importantly, we must learn the ways of God. I want to share a few of those with you this morning. How God does his things. And if you read scripture, there's a line that is drawn from the beginning all the way to the end in how God operated with men and women of, of great stature in scripture. God had to test them. And one of the tests is a test of patience. God will test your patience. It's always, almost always how he does it. Think of Abraham. Think of Isaac. Think of Moses. Think of David. All of those people. There was almost no time when God said, I'm going to do this for you, and immediately that didn't happen. God set them in a path to test them. Think of Joseph. He's never, God will test your patience. Will you stay and stick with me to the end? I'm absolutely sure in the lives of many of you in this room, God is doing that now. Will you be patient to see the fulfillment of, which, of that which God has spoken in his word and through his spirit in your heart? Learn that. Patience is a very critical thing that God looks for in our lives. He's going to test it. And the sooner you realize this is the way God works, the better it'll be for you to just rest and say, I, I know what you're doing, Father. You're trying to see if I will be patient by your grace. I will be. He's going to test your patience. And almost nothing comes immediately. It could be one month, one year. It could be one day. It could be 10 years. It could be 20 years. I, we don't know those things, but God does. Do not be ignorant of the ways of God. He's testing your patience. He wants you to see. He wants you to see. He knows but you to know where you are indeed. Be patient. That is one of the ways of God, almost always. I know you are going through it now. I am too. Patience. You must not be hasty. And your hastiness, by the way, is not going to move, move God's hand in any way. You can be hasty all you want to, it's not going to make God haste. Uh, you're not going to make God speed up the time. It's just going to cause confusion, unrest, and uh, unbelief ultimately in your heart. Be patient. Wait patiently for Him to act. David said that several times. Psalm in the Psalms, uh, Psalm 27. Let me look at that first. In Psalm 27, David says here. Verse 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, he says there, I say on the Lord. This was a man who went through a lot. He's telling you and me, you must wait patiently for God to act. Hastiness will not move God's hand in any way. It's just going to cause confusion for you. Wait patiently for him to act. I'm telling you, this is one of the things this is how God does his things. He's going to test. Will you be patient? He tested Zechariah and, and, uh, and Elizabeth also. 
And in due time, his word came to be. Remember this. Wait patiently for God to ask. And several other places he says that in Psalm 37, you'll see that also. Wait. Wait for God to bring to pass that which he has said of you. That is one of those ways of God that you must learn. You must remember always. Patience. Patience. In Hebrews 10, it says, we have need of patience. And the one who is to come will surely come. That is one of those things. The second thing in the ways that God does his things that you must learn is that he tests your patience and obviously your faith. He has great delight, great, great delight in that man or woman who believes even while they're waiting. That brings such a joy to God's heart. I'm saying this to you and me, brothers and sisters, that we might be those to whom, uh, of whom God can look them and say, wow, see what this child of mine, in spite of everything that is happening around him or her, everything that appears contrary to what, uh, what I've said to him, he or she still resides in faith. I want to be such a Christian, brothers and sisters, that God will find delight and pleasure in me. And also, another way of God is to do that, again, as we read earlier, that which appears impossible. It's not the easy things. I mean, the easy things we all get. When James says you will not get anything from the hands of God, God still gives you the basic things of life. That's fine. But the impossible things of God, the impossible things of the New Testament, of the life of Jesus, which flesh and blood is unable to attain. God delights to do that. I mean, I'll speak from my experience, honestly. When I read, you know, when I began to see in those verses, like, well, to rejoice always, I mean, that, that, that is impossible, you know. I'm giving an example of one of those verses that you, you, you also read. There's quite impossible things to do in the net by the strength of the natural man. But those are the things God delights to do in our lives. That which appears impossible. He will test, but he finds great delight in that man or woman who says, God, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm going to be patiently wait for you to bring about that which you have said of me. I'm trying to help you see uh, my brothers and sisters. Faith is very, it's a central thing here. Trusting in God for that which is impossible. And as I thought even in the life of Jesus, an example of, of that, turn with me to Psalm 16. The life of Jesus, it says of Jesus there in Psalm 16, in verse 10, this was the confidence Jesus himself had. Remember, no man had risen from the grave ever up to this point, up to the point of Christ. And David prophesying of Jesus, Peter uh, acknowledges this later on. Jesus saying this of, himself, of the Father, you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you let your Holy One to see corruption. Even the Lord Jesus Christ had to have that confidence that the Lord, the Father, his Father, even though he was going to die. But the third day, there was absolutely no doubt in the mind of Jesus that the Father would raise him up. This was a thing that had never happened to any human being. Yet the man Jesus was absolutely sure what the Father had said he would bring to pass. And that's why a man like Abraham, such a great man, that against hope, against what his eyes could see, he rested in God's word, that what he has said, he was able to do also. My brothers and sisters, I'm appealing to you this morning. This is the way. This is the way to attain that life of Jesus, which God has called us to. You have to begin with faith, with faith in God's word, faith that God is able to bring it to pass. Do not go by what you are saying. We've heard that many times. But I'm afraid that I always say must walk by faith. 
day by day. This is the way God does it. There's no other way. And if you find a man who is attaining, it's because one of the main reasons is that one has believed God is able to do it. And to him, God will do it. I'm saying to you and me, be that one. God can bring to pass his word and his ways in my life. Faith is the victory, is our victory. Faith in God and in his word. I'm not just talking about faith that brings us to salvation, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is wonderful. That is the first step. What about the rest of our lives? We walk by faith also. Faith is that victory, the victory that overcomes, the victory that overcomes the world, the victory that overcomes our flesh also. Trust in that God can do this for me. Very important, my brothers and sisters. Very important. I want to say also, this matter of faith is very profound. Everything that we are, everything that we have as believers today, the Bible says it's by faith. I mean, for you, most of you in this room are saved. Have you ever seen Jesus with your natural? Have you talked to him with your voice? I mean, have you heard him in your physical ear? Have you, have you seen him with the eye? No. But yet you believe. You believed that what the scripture said of this man, Jesus, is true. And the Holy Spirit affirmed it in your heart that he was a son. He is a son of God who died as a propitiation for our sins. You believe that much. Ephesians 2, 8, that we're saved by grace through faith. It's not by works that we've done. You believe that. That's why you're here today, right? You believe that which sounded impossible. Most people don't agree to that kind of a statement, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for my sin. But you believe that. Now, the scripture says that we're justified by faith also, Right? Romans uh, 5, 1, we are justified, justified by faith, and so we have peace with God. Scripture says also that we're made pure by faith, Acts, uh, Acts 15, verse 9. We receive the Holy Spirit by faith, Galatians 3, and many other parts of the Bible. Everything is by faith, right? You believe that much. Why then do you think that now God is, will not fulfill that which he has begun in my life? That which began by my faith in Jesus Christ. While then will God, you know when Paul in Philippians 1 says, he is confident, Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that what God has begun in the lives of these believers, he is able to perfect and complete in Christ Jesus. I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, do you think God would have started something in your life and then leave you to, to, uh, to dry up or to fail? No. Romans 8 says, this God who did not spare his son, but gave him up for us, how shall not he with him give us, freely give us everything? Everything is by faith. Don't let your faith end with your uh, conviction that Jesus died for your sin. Let it proceed to completion that everything of the life of Jesus that God has promised to me, he'll bring to pass the life of joy, a life of rest and peace, a life of provision, daily provisions for me, God will do it. You know he knows. He knows the plans he has for you. Will you now settle in your heart that God will bring those things to pass? It will only be if you come by faith. Philippians 1, 6, Paul says, I'm very confident of this very thing, that that which God has begun, who has begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That was the faith Paul had for this Philippians. That is the faith we also must have. And what God has begun in my life, he'll perfect it in Christ Jesus till the day of Christ Jesus. What I'm telling to you, speaking to you of this morning sounds simple, but it's very critical. If you're going to progress in the things of God, you must come by faith. And what is that faith? Absolute assurance that God is able and will do what he has for me. And again, I'm not just speaking of the spiritual things. I'm thinking of speaking also of the daily things that so trip us a lot. Money, uh, work, uh, school, my children, health. Will God not take care of those things? He will. 
He will, but he will test. It's not to say you won't go through these challenges. They'll come, but while in the midst of them, you must settle in your heart. My father will see me through, and he will. He will. Don't put a time on it. Don't say in a day or two or one year. It doesn't matter if it's 10 years. God is still good, and is still good to me. And, you know, many times I think of the attributes of God. God is faithful. His love is good. We sing of all those things many times, but it makes it's no good if all we do is sing about them and not let those attributes of God take hold in our own lives. The goodness of God working in me, the faithfulness of God working with inside of me also and bringing me to be what he has called me to be. Let's not just leave those wonderful attributes to God. God is very good, his love. Okay, it's true. It's like saying the sun is going, it's hot or the sun will shine. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not, the sun will shine. The question is, will you avail yourself to the warmth and the light and the power of the sun? That is what I think of with God many times when we sing all these lovely songs. I wonder what God feels. They're saying how good I am, but look, he's still afraid. He's saying how loving I am, how I care for him and all this. But look, he's still unbelief in his heart. What good is this man singing how great I am, how great God is? But look, I want to sing about it and avail myself to the power of who God is day by day. Faith is what does this, brothers and sisters. Faith in God himself. We must be a people of faith. We must be a church of faith. Every day in your hidden life, you must trust that the Lord, the Lord is able to do that which is impossible, and he'll do it for me. It makes the difference. If you're going to proceed with Christ in the days to come, it's by faith. This Jesus, uh, Peter says, this one whom we have not seen, yet we believe. Shall we just stop at the door? We must go with him all the way to the end. Faith is the key. And the last thing I'll say is this. As we've heard uh, before, that that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And I'm not just talking, certainly reading the Bible is critical. You must read it and know it. And let the Holy Spirit now bring to life that which you read in of God's word. Faith, Romans 10, 17, it comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you're a believer in this room and you're not feeding on God's word, meditating on it and letting the Holy Spirit brood on that word in your heart every day. We can speak of faith all we want to. It have no way, no anchor to take hold of in our hearts. Isaiah once asked uh, in Isaiah 53, who has believed our report? Every time I read that verse, and to whom has the hand of God been revealed? It's like Isaiah saying, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe God's word? or the word of your own heart, or even Satan, who brings confusion. No, I'm going to believe God's word. And to believe God's word, you must take that word in your heart. Read your scripture, and more than just a, a religious act of reading the Bible, have the Holy Spirit bring to life the things you're reading, the matters concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, and concerning you, how we must walk and live in him. That is where faith comes. When trouble comes, you, can, you have that anchor, you know, anchor in God's word. When you remember what he says, no weapon fashioned against me will prosper. If you're in Christ, that verse is absolutely true. When you walk through the waters, uh, they will not overflow you. The rivers will not overflow you. When you walk through the fires, it's not going to scorch you, Isaiah 43. I think of this thing many times. It's either true or it's not. I believe it's true. And if it's true, it must be true in my own life also. So in the midst of trials, God's word is what comes to be our anchor. Faith in God's word. So brothers and sisters, think on these things. Faith is the key. Faith in God and his word. And if any of us lacks that faith, turn to the Lord, ask him for help. It's a gift from him also. Father, help me. I don't want to doubt you at all. I don't want to doubt you. I've begun in faith in Jesus as my Savior. I'm going to continue with him to the very end. Everything by faith. Faith in God himself. Amen.